communication. We want to talk about communication. This week, my wife and I, we had a couple of days off. And um, we were in a hotel by ourselves, no children. But we weren't talking to each other. We were talking at each other, but we weren't talking to each other. I was talking to him. Yeah. I don't think yeah. he was talking to me. I was off a little bit. I he was, was, he was in a special place. Well, I had a lot of... No. You know, that, that's what we're going to talk about. Not today. We probably won't get into that, but we're going to talk about roadblocks to communication. And a lot of time, men, we have things. We, we, deal with, we try to deal with life in silos mm -hmm. by ourselves. And we have an issue sometimes sharing and expressing our ideas and sometimes we just kind of hold our feelings to ourselves and you're doing life by yourself. And you ask them, uh, you ask them, well, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You know, we try to play this but, tough But role. everything about you, your demeanor, yes. your, your, your body language, your tone, everything is saying you're not good. Right. You're not good. Right. So it wasn't, it wasn't her. It was me. You know, and, and I mean, my mother-in-law, man, she kept the kids for us. And we had time to ourselves. I mean, we could have been, you know getting down really getting down in, in in the hotel and everything but we were not you know we were not my mind was just gone i was thinking about my like job they could have saved that money yeah i was thinking about the <laughs> career <laughs> okay. went to the house yeah went to the house. Could have saved i was dollars. thinking about my job i was thinking about the career i was thinking about the church yeah i was thinking about what people thinking you know pastors we don't get discount tickets we struggle Mm -hmm. The same way a lot of other people struggle. We do. We have the same. We'll say we are right. And we'll say those different things. But we have the same stuff that's going through our mind, man. And, and so we here we are. No kids. And we actually did go on two dates. Went on two we dates. We went yeah. on two dates. And so while we're on the dates, I was there. But, but I wasn't, wasn't there. there. Yeah. And my wife and I, we preach that. If you're going to be there. Be there. Be there. If you're going to be there. What I mean by that, and we talk about, we got a lesson that we teach on Roblox in the bedroom. If you're having sex and you're making love to your spouse, if you're there, be, be there. there. I mean, you, your wife deserves, your husband deserves all of you at that particular time. And so that what, that's what was going on this weekend. I mean, this week. I mean, we had the whole week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I, think, I didn't get the kiss of Thursday. They came Wednesday. Wednesday. They came Wednesday. Mm -hmm. well, so we had, well, we had Sunday night, Monday Good night, night Tuesday, Tuesday night. night. And then they came Wednesday. So we had a lot of nights when you married. A lot of nights when you married, man. So we had this whole time there ourselves. We, had, we went on two dates, but we were still off. We were still not connecting. And I did not know what was going on. I was like, Lord, what is what is the problem? You know, what is going on? But as I took this weekend and I began to just think through my life and think of everything, I had other things pulling at me. Yeah. You know, and that's what happens. You start thinking. That's why I titled this The Marriage is more important than the ministry. And my wife didn't want me to post that. She said, don't put that because you know people gonna think this. I don't care what you think. But here's the thing. Okay. Because Paul, like as Paul said this, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I, don't quote me on this, but it's in the Bible. But he said, if you preach this, and I myself be a castaway. In other words, you preach this gospel, and you yourself, what you preaching, is not working for you, life, yeah. then why are you preaching it? Wow. That's if powerful. what you are preaching, is not working in your own marriage. If what you are preaching is not working in your life, then how do you know it's not? How do you know it work? You have to know it works in order to tell other people this works. My wife and I, we tell you that your marriage can come out of hell because we climbed out of it. Yeah. We tell you that you can be what God has called you to be because we're living it, we're walking it, we're evident in it. So anyway. That's what was going on this weekend. But I do have to I do have to testify my victory though. All right. So I told my wife, you know, after I came on, I realized what oh, the enemy goodness. had been doing to me and everything, and I realized where I had been missing it. But I bought some correction in my house, you know. You know, as a husband you have to that's bring That's not on the mess. <laughs> that's not on the <laughs> you know, As a husband list. you have to bring correction. And my wife was like, Well, no, it's not that. But then Saturday morning, she told me. Glory be to the most high God. Come on, let's lift our hands in worship. I want you to tell them what you told me Saturday when we were at Dollar okay. General around 9 o'clock a.m. Tell them what you told me. I told him I love him. Thank you, Jesus. So, oh, wait, wait. Sometimes sometimes you have what did to, you say? I love you. Thank you. I love and you sometimes too. you have to work with somebody where they are. Amen. Amen. Even if you didn't do Tell the do, whole story. Don't leave that out. Don't leave that out. Tell the whole story. So I bought him 
a, a just a token of love. Thank you, I gave him a little gift. Thank you, Lord. And, and because the, he needed that. But the gift. But what, what? Tell the words that came with the gift. Tell me the, the donut. Words. The donut I bought you. Yeah, but, the, but the words. <laughs> but tell him the words. The message that you said. I told him I love him. And I was. I was, mm. she said, I was mm. right. Mm. She said, you're right, honey. Sometimes you have to think, do you want to be right <laughs> or do you want peace? So sometimes I was like, you know what, give him, give him his donut, his bear claw, and then his, his smile came on his face and he was okay. But all of this that what I was talking about is around communication. It's around communication. Communication is the lifeblood of relationships. I wrote down some facts here. I said, any major corporation or university or any major decision that is made in an executive um, branch or anything like that, it should be done with effective communication. Effective communication. Miscommunication is probably the basis right. of so many problems and so many issues, not just in organizations, but in marriages. Right. And so I said 70% of marriages can be saved from divorce if you only just talk. What you have when you talk about talking, a lot like... Let's go back to this week. Again, like I said, I was just transparent with you guys. I told you, my wife and I, we rented a room. We were in a hotel. We went on two dates. We were talking, mm -hmm. but I wasn't there. So we were talking at each other and not to each other. Now, she may have been talking to me, but one of the things we're going to talk about in communication, you have a sender. And you, and have, you a have a receiver. And mm -hmm. sometimes you could be going through the antics of, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but you're not there. Your mind is somewhere else. And that's what was going on with me. My mind was, was somewhere else. Seventy percent of marriages, you can talk through the divorce if you only just, I mean, you could talk through saving your marriage from actually being divorced by actually just talking. That's the actual statistic, 70% of marriages. So what is communication? It's the art of listening, sharing, and receiving. Listening, sharing, sharing and, and receiving. receiving. Information. So you have one person that's sharing and another person that's listening and then both parts are doing that. So what was going on with us? I was she was sharing, but I wasn't really receiving because my mind was somewhere else. Communication is what the enemy used to dismantle marriages. And this is what we're going to end at today. He used lack of communication to dismantle marriages. But before I got there, I said I gave an example of a heart attack blockage, things that block communication in the home things that can block communication in the home. So you think about a person that with a with a heart, you know, they have a heart and they say, you know, your heart is not working because this you have this amount of blockage. Block it. You can the heart can still be working, but it's not functioning to its full capacity because mm -hmm. there's blockage. Can, can you take a second and share with the viewers and some of you have heard this story before. Well you know of this story in the Bible. However, sometimes you need to hear it again to get the full magnitude. Can you just briefly share with the people about the story of Babel? Right. And this will give you an idea of the power of communication and why it's powerful in general, but why it's so powerful in your marriage. And because it was so powerful, why God had to disrupt the communication. Can you briefly right. just the, get them up to speed? In the Bible, about you know, a lot of people talk about the Tower of Babel. Uh, and, um, uh, the first world ruler, I talk about this all the time in my classes, the first world ruler in the world was a black man by the name of Nimrod. He gathered a lot of people together and he said, we're going to build a tower and this tower is going to go from earth to heaven. We're going to build a tower. And so the Bible says it was possible because they were all communicating, talking, and moving in the same direction. But the Bible says the Lord had to come down and disrupt the language. He said, because if they do this, he said, nothing shall be impossible for them. Now, that's a whole bunch of people. That's a whole bunch of people. Just think about in your house, you and your spouse getting together on one accord and talking. It's amazing when we have an opportunity to work with couples, when you see the breakdown in communication and in, in the world that we live in, and I give everybody uh, just a, a, a little bit of a reprieve. The world that we live in is so busy. It's so much going on. If you got mm. kids, they're pulling on you. If you have jobs, your job is pulling on you. Taking care of homes and taking care of this. and All of that is just constant things going on. So it really takes a lot of effort and energy to communicate and stay connected with your spouse. It'll be amazed. 
you will be amazed if you just kind of going through life, you'll be amazed at how when you finally do talk with your spouse, the level of miscommunication, you're thinking they're thinking one thing and right. their mind is on someone else, something else. And because you're not communicating, the enemy can get into that. Exactly. And then begin to fuel things. And you start thinking they act in this particular way because, oh, they must feel this way about me. And their mind might be on something else, but it's just miscommunication. Mm -hmm. Communication is so key. Right. But in this day and age, you have to work on it. It is... It, it doesn't come easy. Right. It just doesn't. Right. I, 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 you know, I wish we could tell you that, but it really is a bona fide effort. And you got to work at it and work at it and work at it. And it's not it. just a one time. It's a daily. Right. It's that you can't communicate real good. Some people communicate real good over Christmas break and don't talk to each other again for months. It's, it's, a, it's a daily walk. Right. It's a and daily so the, walk. I know we're about to end, but I want to say this. Um, the reason I was so transparent with you is because I believe a lot of pastors are suffering like I was suffering. You know, you have so many ideas, goals, dreams, vision, and you're trying to push and you're trying to push it and you're trying to communicate these ideas to everybody else, but you're not even communicating a clear vision in your home. You're not listening to a clear vision in your home. And one of the things you have to understand is, is that the Bible says this. He said this, that nothing shall be impossible for them because they were communicating. Nothing shall be impossible for you. If you, if your husband and a wife are talking to each other, nothing shall be impossible for you. The thing that you're going after, it is possible if you just talk it out. Let me tell you something. Some of the things that you're believing for and reaching for is hidden in the jam of your wife. And some of the things that you're reaching for and going after for is hidden in the jam of your husband. Your husband can have the idea, the thought that can unlock the thing that you're going after. Your wife can have that one idea that can unlock the thing that you're going after. But if you're both going in separate directions, you'll never end up in the right place. Yeah, and yeah, I want to add this one nugget. And when we say communicating, we're not saying that when you're communicating that initially you're completely on the same page. But exactly. it's amazing. It's amazing when you come together and you are committed to communicating that you can start and then you can start talking about it. And then together you'll talk your way into a solution. Exactly. But instead, you're trying to think of it on this way on your end. You're trying to think about it this way on your end. And I, I, I thought about this, and I, I love this. I thought about this scripture this weekend after me and my husband had a little communication. But the Bible says one can chase a thousand. But two. Two can put 10,000 to flight. The power of agreement, touching and agreement, agreeing and communicating together, that's powerful. Yeah. It is absolutely powerful. Well, guys, that's it. I'll, and I'll get into it next week. You going to come on with me next week? I guess I can come on. She going to come on next week? Guys, she, she committed to it. You see, <laughs> I, had to, I had to beg her to come on this week. but she No, she gonna, he did not. I had to, to beg her. I had to beg her. Probably, Please, honey, the people want to hear from me. No, I'm just joking. I asked her to come on and um, because I wanted to share uh, my personal testimony, how I overcame this week and everything. So I guess gonna, I could come on because I help him stay on time when I come did. on. She does. You know, when you I, know, I come I on, I, I look, I say, is he still talking to the people? That's right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> It's so, 30 minutes later. But next week, we're going to talk about roadblocks the enemy try to use to dismantle your ma dismantle communication. Right. Things that, the tricks, his tricks are never new. They're the same thing. He used the same tricks, the same schemes, the same enemies to dismantle communication in the home. But once you begin to understand what it's aimed towards, yeah. Then you can say, you know what, we need to we need to work on communication exactly. and get back on communication, you know. And it's amazing, you know, once you get back, the level of connection that you can have in your home. Awesome. Are you gonna end up?